This is a Ford Mustang, and it's the most customized car on the planet. Owners like to modify them to their liking, but the best variants have always come straight from the factory, with plenty of speed up front and the comfort of a warranty in the back. But every chassis does have its limits, and in my opinion, the Mustang's limit is about 500 feet of horsepower. Any less doesn't feel like quite enough, and any more certainly feels like too much. You see, we've driven lots of Mustangs. In 2009, the Mustang GT we filmed had 300 horsepower, and it needed more. In 2013, we filmed the 662 horsepower GT500, and it needed less, or at the very least, much better brakes to keep up. In between is the best driving Mustang you can buy from a dealer, the Boss 302 Laguna Seca. Well, now there's one that just might be the best of both worlds. This is the Roush Stage 3, and with its big-ass blower and slim figure, it might just unseat the boss at the top of the Mustang food chain. That sounds like Motor League. <laughs> it starts with the power. Roush's Eaton TVS Supercharger feeds 14 pounds of boost into the 5-liter 4-cam engine, and out comes 575 horsepower and 505 pound-feet of torque. And wait for it. Huge surprise coming here. It's loud as f Fast too! <laughs> Legend has it, the Roush's exhaust is the only thing on earth loud enough to stop Bill Caswell from telling a story. The suspension has been lowered and tightened. The brakes have been bulking up in the off-season, and the 20-inch wheels get a custom compound from Cooper. There's subtle styling cues on every body panel, outside and in. You'd think that all this go-fast hardware would make this Mustang impractical, but you'd be wrong. What's amazing is, after a week of driving this car, the front splitter hasn't scraped anywhere. I haven't had to take anything at an angle and the suspension doesn't beat you up. It's extremely docile, it's soft, it's easy to use every day. There's nothing about it that makes it less practical than a regular Mustang. It doesn't idle funny. It actually on the highway gets between 18 and 22 miles per gallon and it runs nice. Everything works. There hasn't been a single issue with this car in any way, shape or form in the seven days and almost a thousand miles I've put on it. And that's the kind of stuff that only comes from real durability testing in all different kinds of conditions. But don't worry, just because it's practical doesn't mean it's slow. This car is seriously quick. It handles good, it's got good turn in with the square stance tires. The throttle pedal is almost one of those two-stage ones where there's fast and then whoa fast, you know? And when boost builds, it builds with the force and feels every bit of the 575 horsepower they say that it makes. You know, like all Mustangs uh, with the live axle, the Roush is really good at going fast right up until you're trying to go really fast on a very bumpy road. When the road gets really bumpy, it does exhibit certain behaviors that are inherent to that live axle. It may take a little op on you when you hit a bump, and it doesn't mean you're gonna lose control. It's just something that is a quirk of the Mustang that you have to get used to, like a 911 having the engine in the back. It's the same kind of thing. It's, it's engineering that shouldn't work, but for some reason it works good. We're not surprised it's fast either. It seems Roush has something of a winning record when it comes to racing Fords. Plus, there's something to be said for a tuner car that Ford is willing to sell right along their other product and back to back with a warranty. The thing is, unlike other tuner cars, this one does feel like it was built with the full cooperation of Ford, which makes total sense when you just look at a map and see where Roush is located. I do like the 5-liter engine. 
it's a lot rev happier than the LS motors. It's a lot closer to like the M3 engine. The four cam design, it, it just seems happier cruising around at three or 4,000 RPM than an LS motor does. I've said it before, LS motors, they're kind of lazy. The Ford modular engine, really rev happy, especially in the Boss. Time to nitpick. The seats are terrible. Like, unbelievably, inexplicably, how did they get this bad terrible? And it's the seating position, right? So you're, the bottom doesn't go far enough back, and then you have to angle the top part back, which means you have to lean forward, which means your spine is shaped like a C. So every time you hit a bump, you're compressing, causing lower back pain, which I've experienced all week. Then, from the driver's seat, I can see the 3M tape holding on the fake hood scoop. Why they do that, I have no idea. Then there's the fake louvers on the side, which you can clearly see window glass through. Then there's the boost gauge in the vent, which looks great during the day, but doesn't dim with the whole rest of the dash at night. So you can have a nice subtle glow from the dash, and then a boost gauge just blaring in your face, blinding you. Mustangs are heavy cars, you know, you need to put the biggest possible brakes you can possibly fit in the car, especially for $68,000. For the kind of money they're charging, this thing I should have carbon ceramic brakes on it. But instead it has slightly upgraded versions of what you get with a regular GT or a Boss. The sound is moderately addictive though, I will give you that. Then of course, there's the price. The Roush Stage 3 costs, as tested, $68,000, and that's without navigation or the biggest brake option. That's $5,000 more than the last Shelby GT500 we tested, and nearly $20,000 more than the Boss Laguna Seca. Now I don't know about you guys, but I have a pretty hard time justifying sixty-eight dollars for a Mustang. That's well into Corvette territory, and ultimately, for that kind of money, the Corvette is just a better platform for going fast. So here's the thing. Yes, the Roush Stage 3 is arguably the best driving Mustang you can buy from a dealership. There's no question it's fast, and you give up nothing in terms of practicality compared to any other Mustang. However, Roush sells the parts individually if you want. So here's what you do. Get yourself a Boss Mustang Laguna Seca for about 48 grand. Strap on the supercharger, which we know works really well. Get a square stance tire set up, and you're good to go. You get the side dumps, you get the Boss name, and you get the Recaro seats, all for a whole bunch less money than they charge you for that thing. I'm Matt Farah from The Smoking Tire. See you next week on Tune. Brought to you by Film Tools, the official camera equipment provider of the smoking tire. Has made those camera angles that you just saw for that burnout, made all that possible. <laughs>